Number 34. A submarine is stranded on the bottom of an ocean with its hatch 25 meters below the surface. Calculate the force needed to open the hatch from the inside. Given it is circular and 0.45 meters in diameter, air pressure inside the submarine is one atmosphere. All right. So um, in order to answer a question like this, we have to figure out, so uh, there's a certain hatch here, right? We have to figure out the force needed to open this hatch from the inside. So the important idea here is that whatever the net pressure is here on this hatch will determine the amount of force and the area that is, uh, along with the area, will determine the amount of force that's necessary to open this hatch. Okay, now, so let's write out our equation. We're going to be dealing with, basically just mention the variables, right? So we're dealing with pressure, and that's going to equal the force applied divided by the area over which that force is applied. Now, the important component here is the net pressure, okay? So the net pressure is going to be equal to the net force divided by the area, okay, of the hatch. So this should all make sense so far, right? We want to find the net force that's necessary to open the hatch. And therefore, we need to know the net pressure. So what pressures is this hatch experiencing? I'm sure there's two that are obvious, one that might not be as obvious. So pretend here's the hatch, okay? And we realize that there's a weight, you know, there's a column of water here, right? Right above, right above the hatch. And that column of water has a certain weight to it, right? And that's going to be a function of the height or the amount of water above it, okay? We also know that there's a certain amount of pressure inside the vessel here. So that's going to be pushing in the opposite direction. And there's one other pressure. It's actually going to be the pressure of the column of air above this as well, okay? That part is that part might be the part that's missed. But remember, it's below the ocean. So not only is this hatch experiencing the pressure of the water above it, but it's experiencing the pressure of everything else above it all the way up to the sky, all the way up to, I was going to say the sky, right? All the, all the way on up, all right? So three components to the pressure. One is just regular atmospheric pressure. Two will be the weight or the pressure due to the water. And then three will be the opposing internal pressure that's pushing up of one atmosphere. All right, so let's write that out. So here we have the pressure of the atmosphere uh, plus the pressure of the, uh, I could make these negative if I wanted to, uh, but just just leave them as positive for now because they're, they're really kind of pointing down, but it doesn't matter. Um, pressure of then the water minus then the pressure of the, or I should say inside the submarine, okay? Now remember, I know this pressure is pointing up, so it could be, you know, in terms of the picture, it probably should be positive. I should probably switch these signs on out, but then I got to worry about negative heights and all that. Just, I'm going to, I'm going to just, I'm changing all the signs in this one. All right. Anyway, we're worried about the, we know that there's going to have to be a net force upward anyway, right from the nature of the problem. So this is going to be equal then to the net force divided by the area. So to find the net force, all I need to do is multiply the area on over, right? So we're going to have the net force here is equal to area. Now let's get rid of A and let's substitute in now the formula for area. That's going to be pi r squared, right? Because why? It's circular. Then that's going to be then multiplied by the pressure of the atmosphere, which we know what that is, right? This is just one atmosphere worth of pressure, okay? Plus the pressure of the water. Now how do we find the pressure of the water? Well, we're going to have to use this equation, all right? Substitute this result on in for the pressure over here. So I'm going to start doing that. So this is the height of the water multiplied by the density of the water. Remember, it's seawater multiplied by gravity and then subtract out the pressure inside the submarine. OK, now this is basically your equation, but we have two things that will perfectly cancel out, right? The atmospheric pressure, that's one atmosphere. They told us the pressure inside the submarine. That's one atmosphere as well. So they, they totally cancel. So you can simplify this equation if you like. I'm going to start plugging in the values now at the top. So pi times our radius. So they told us the diameter, 0.45 meters. So take 0.45 divided by 2 to find the radius, then square it. Okay. And then, probably going to run out of space here. And then we're now going to multiply that by the height of the water, which was 25 meters, 
The density of seawater, which is a little greater than just regular water, uh, that's 1,025 kilogram per cubic meter, and then gravity, right, 9.8. And now we just go about our business. So let's just plug it on in. All right, so we're going to have pi times parenthesis 0.45 divided by 2, close parenthesis, square that, then multiplied by 25 times 1025 times 9.8. And we get a value here of, uh, we'll go out three sig figs, so 3.99 times 10 to the fourth, and that is in terms of Newtons. All right? So hopefully uh, hopefully this helped, all right? This uh, should be the answer. And there's actually an important takeaway. I hope I don't, I'm just thinking about it right now. I mean, I hope you never find yourself in this situation, but... Um, you know, the, the important aspect of this problem is that um, realizing that the pressure needed to open this hatch is counteracted by the pressure that's inside of the ship, okay? So basically the net pressure. So in terms of, you know, a car, let's just say someone's driving and all of a sudden they find themselves in, in water and their car is sinking, right? Um, if the best thing to probably do would be to actually open your window. That sounds counterintuitive because you're thinking, well, that would let water in. I want to keep the water out. Well, water's going to get in eventually, right? The question is, is how fast can you get out of the car? So the and you want to try to open the doors close to the surface, right? Because if the car starts sinking, the lower this car starts going in terms of the water, you know, if this is sinking, the lower it starts going, the more pressure there's going to be to try to open the door, okay? Especially if the car does not have any water in it. That's the key. If there's water on the outside and the car is fully submerged and there's no water inside, the lower this thing goes, the harder it is to open that door, all right? Because the pressure keeps going up but the pr outside of the car, meaning due to the water, but the pressure inside of the car isn't really changing by much. There's some water coming in, but it's slow. And then this is going to keep on going down. And then by the time the pressure equilibrates to when you can open it, now you're going to be 20 feet underwater trying to get up. Okay? That's not going to happen. So the best thing to do is actually, if you ever find yourself, I hope, like I said, not, but um, you want to open the door. Or, well, you might not be able to open the door initially, or roll down the window or something. Try to get water into your car as soon as possible. So that as soon as the car starts becoming submerged, there's already tons of water in the car. So the pressure of the water in the car is balancing the pressure of the water outside of the car. So the force pushing this way is equaling now the force pushing this way. And it is much easier now to open the door and then swim yourself to safety. All right. So here's physics in real life. See, I just saved your life. I just saved your life in case something ever bad happens. So. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. All right, appreciate it very much. Um, give us a hand, too, if you don't mind saving our life by subscribing. That would be awesome. And uh, I really do enjoy this very much. I, I hope you do, too. And um, look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.